The Tweak Room in 3D Coats is a companion workspace to the Paint Room in that it works strictly on paint objects. For those who may be new to the application, you might be asking, well, what is a paint object? A paint object is something you import into the paint workspace, either from the splash screen that you see when you first open the application up or from the file menu. This workspace is still the only one that will allow you to transform or sculpt on a paint object. So let me turn wireframe on and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's a low to medium poly count model with the exception of the beard and the eyebrows. But nonetheless, this workspace is where you would want to make slight tweaks, as the name implies, using some of the basic sculpting brushes as well as some transform tools. This is also a great workspace to use for blend shapes or morph targets because it will store them on layers if you are working in micro vertex mode. We'll cover that in another video, but we're just gonna look at the basic tools here now. And uh, I'll turn wireframe off. The paint objects panel here is just kind of a outliner panel, if you will. You just list all the paint objects. We can lock a layer so that as we're working on one object, we're not affecting the other. You can also hide them as well. You can delete layers from the paint objects panel and whatnot. Let's go ahead and take a look at the sculpt brushes and then we'll come back to the transform tools. So the move brush is much like what you have in the sculpt workspace. Sometimes you need to nudge a panel in order to refresh it. I'll alt click the visibility icon for the beard and uh, enable the body so we can see it. And I'm going to lock the body object here as we nudge or adjust the beard. And I can also let the eyebrows be visible because we're going to tweak those as well. Okay, so using the move brush, it's fairly self-explanatory. I may want to nudge parts of this mesh to where it intersects the body a little bit better. So there's not much of a gap. And what I'm doing with my brush is right clicking and dragging right to increase the brush size or left to decrease it. If you right mouse click and drag down, it's going to decrease the effect of whatever tool you're using. And let me turn symmetry on. That might help a little bit. So I hit the S key to bring that up. It may not be perfectly symmetrical, but it still can help move parts of this mesh on the other side. Let's go up here to the eyebrows, and if I want, I can hide that plane, yet still keep symmetry enabled. Let's say we're done. Now let's look at using the draw brush. I'm going to unlock the body. Then I will hide the beard and the eyebrows for now. And let's turn wireframe on. Okay, so yeah, the draw brush is just kind of a general purpose sculpting brush. It's a little bit intense right now, so let me undo. Right click and drag down to decrease the effect. And also the constant pressure is going to be much stronger than using one of these others that are pressure dependent. So I can use light pressure. And as you may already know, if you want to sculpt microsurface details like skin pores and wrinkles and cracks and you know, small surface bumps, whatever the case may be, you can do that in the paint workspace using image-based sculpting. So again, that's more for the surface, but this is sculpting the geometry itself. Okay, so um, yeah, 
just going to leave it at that. Let's look at flatten for a moment. Uh, I can kind of flatten the top of his, his head there. And you can see it's raising up the geometry on the edges of the brush. So I'm going to do that. You can also smooth or hold his shift key when using these other tools. And it's pretty common throughout 3D Coat to be able to hold the shift key and smooth. All right, and shift is going to shift in screen space, essentially. Let me give a little bit more intensity. Smudge is, as the name implies, just like in Photoshop. Um, collapse and expand is basically pinch and inflate, if you will. Uh, let me go ahead and bring the beard back up. I'll lock the body. Turn wireframe off. Let's see if there's an area that I want to pinch. I can do that here. And perhaps there are some areas where I want to make it balloon a little bit. Let's see, maybe something like that. All right. Now let's look at the Select Transform tool. We can use a brush, a rectangle, or we can select with gradient. Let's try that. You click to create your first point and click on your second point and it will create a gradient in between the two. I'm going to go to select with brush, use maybe a shape marquee of some kind, and make sure ignore back faces is unchecked so we can go all the way through. Hold down the control key. And that will deselect it. Now we can rotate it. and move it. The downside to the transform tools here is that they are pretty much deprecated and thus not as extensive as those in the Sculpt and Retopo workspaces. The reason is that Andrew has planned for years to remove this legacy workspace, which has largely been replaced by the voxel and surface mode sculpting tools in the Sculpt Room. It's clear. We can use select objects. So let me go ahead and I'll click the body to bring everything up. So we can select all. That way, if we need to scale an entire model, we can do that, rotate or remove it. And if you have a selection, you can flip it along the X, Y, or Z axis. Lastly, you can save a selection or load it later on. You can also invert it as well. And that's going to conclude this look at the Tweak Workspace in 3D Code. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.